Yeah, hi, buddy. Um, what happened to John Gray there? Uh, you know, Danielle, uh, John's forearm started to tighten up the top of his forearm, the lateral side. So we were pre <clears throat> we were precautionary and took him out of the game. Is it similar to what um, he injured earlier this season? Um, and then um, with Daniel Bard, I mean, I know there were a lot of close calls tonight, um, but what did you see from him there in the eights? You know, good stuff. Uh, uh, you're right on with, you know, a lot of closes, uh, a, lot of, a lot of pitches that were close. A lot of pitches on the edges of them. Like, I got to review the, the video, but, you know, Muncie uh, looked like a really good pitch to Muncie off the end of the bat, just, you know, blooped it in. That's baseball. Uh, but the walks came back to ha uh, haunt him for sure. You know, Betts and Turner both, uh, you know, Daniel was trying to keep the ball down, trying to produce a ground ball uh, and missed. You know, that's, uh, you know, in that part of the game against this lineup. And they'll force you to throw strikes. They really will. They, you know, they'll grind you out. Uh, but Daniel, you know, tonight, uh, you know, delivery looked good. Everything looked good. Just couldn't get the ball in the strike zone. And then the pitch to, to Will Smith was a little bit up fastball. Again, trying to get a grounder. Uh, looked a little bit elevated. He put a good level swing on it. Hit a, hit a line drive. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll go to Patrick Saunders <clears throat> next. Go ahead, Patrick. Hey, buddy, I'm sorry. When... When you answered Danielle's question about John, uh, I got it got a little fuzzy, so I couldn't hear. I think she asked you if it was similar to the injury that he had earlier this year. Yes. Okay, I'm yeah, sorry. She, no, she did ask that. Okay. And I answered no. Oh, okay. Well, can you tell us? A, I'm trying. I'm trying to think. What was his injury early in the year? Uh, uh, flexor tendon, I believe. Yeah, this is different. This is different. Okay. Do you have any sense right now if he's going to miss any time or anything? No sense. We're gonna we're gonna wait a couple of days and assess it. Uh, I talked with Keith prior to coming on here with uh, you guys, and Keith said, "Let's wait a couple of days. Let's see how it sets up tomorrow." Uh, like I said, it's in the top part of the forearm, uh, which generally, uh, in part baseball parlance, is is okay. So we'll we'll see. Okay. Uh, getting back to, to Daniel for a moment, and I'm certainly no pitching expert, but he has such movement uh, on his fastball sometimes. Right. Is that kind of what you guys are trying to harness right now is to get that where that pitch is not dipping out of the strike zone toward the, the end of the, of the pitch? That's always the challenge, Patrick, with, with guys with great movement is, uh, you know, co controlling and commanding the movement. I mean, that's a, you know, that's a skill. At the, at the high end, right, you have Hall of Famer Greg Maddox, who had great movement on the ball and was able to locate it to the edges in the strike zone and move it a little bit off. Uh, a lot of pitchers with, with movement, uh, it, is, it is truly a, uh, you know, I wouldn't say catch 22 because you want the movement because uh, it's hard to hit movement. But if you don't command it, uh, it leads you out of the strike zone. So, uh, you know, that's something that we've talked to Daniel about. And that, you know, that's, you know, that's some mechanics, that's delivery, that's consistency of release point. Uh, you know, to be able to get, the, to get your release point consistent to get the ball in the strike zone. Uh, you know, today, I think, you know, again, I, you know, I, I can't speak for him, but watching, him pitch, and I've watched a lot of pitchers pitch. He was truly trying to keep the ball down uh, to get a ground ball. He's got good movement when it's down, or you know, even arm side up, and he's able to produce a grounder. Uh, you know, with the hard two seam fastball and even the breaking ball. Uh, he threw some, it, from from my vantage point, some good pitches that looked close. Uh, you know, but didn't get the call. But again, but then again, that's baseball. If you don't get it, then you got to move it a little closer into you know, into the strike zone. So, uh, you know, he's not going to complain, no excuses. 
<clears throat> he walked two guys to you know to load the bases, and then gave up a you know a base hit single on a you know on a pitch that was up. Okay, two two positive uh, questions or observations from me, buddy. Uh, one, Yancey Almonte, four Ks in his two scoreless innings. Uh, he looked very sharp tonight. I'm I'm wondering if you thought the same thing. You know, after the first two hitters, I thought he picked up the pace a little bit and made pitches. Uh, obviously didn't like the leadoff walk. And then he caught a break on the bullet line drive to Crone for a double play, right? But then right. again, that's baseball too. You don't walk the leadoff hitter well on four straight pitches. And he caught a break on a bullet line drive that doubled off turn. And then from there, it looked like he settled in and made some pitches. Uh, but uh, I like the fastball velocity, you know, 94, 95. Uh, they had some they had some bad swings on his breaking ball, uh, which is a good sign. So, uh, you know, he bounced back after the leadoff walk, caught a break with the line drive double play, and then got four outs, I thought, on some pretty good pitching. And the other thing was what we talking about uh, uh, Diaz all, all season. When he picked off Trey Turner at first on the snap throw, uh, that's just another feather in his cap, so to speak, his growth, right, this year? Agree. Uh, you know, good in-game awareness. He and CJ both uh, on the same page as far as the possibility of the pick. Tried it the one time, and then, uh, you know, Turner, uh, you know, aggressive base runner, as we know, uh, got the very big secondary, and, and another back pick got him. But he can throw. And even the, you know, even the stolen base that Turner – uh, you know, stole third, you know, that was a good throw to Mac. I mean, he just, you know, Turner got such a big jump that, uh, you know, Elias made it look uh, closer than it should have been, but he can throw. He really doesn't. He's not afraid to throw. Uh, he's got strength to the, to the throw. He's got accuracy. Uh, you know, he's, I don't want to say turning into, because I think it's always there, but it's starting to show on a regular basis, you know, his defensive work behind the plate. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. We'll go to Kevin Henry next. Go ahead, Kev. Uh, buddy, one follow-up on John. Is that something that came upon very suddenly, or was he battling it uh, early on in the start you know, as well? That's a good question. I, you know, I, I, I talked to John briefly in between innings, and, uh, you know, he threw a very uh, powerful side session a couple of days ago, didn't feel anything. Uh, but yet he also said he'd sort of felt a little – uh, you know, a little soreness in the top of the forearm. So, uh, you know, I got to speak with John a little bit. You know, a lot of pitchers, a lot of times, Kevin, are uh, a little ambiguous and, uh, you know, what they, they tell me. So, but, uh, you know, Fosty said he warmed up great. You know, I mean, you know, for me, it might have had a little something to do with the long first inning, the 32 pitch inning. Mm -hmm. You know, that, you know, that to me, you know, might be an indicator of what happened. And it looked like on TV that uh, Chi Chi was warming up uh, to come in for John and then Tyler came in. Was that a situation with traffic on or? Yeah, that just... was traffic. I thought, uh, you know, the best case scenario there was to bring uh, Tyler in with guys on first and third. I think the potential for a strikeout is there. Uh, nothing against Chi Chi, but, you know, Chi-Chi's more of a contact type pitcher. Uh, I thought Tyler might have a chance to, you know, uh, limit the damage. So uh, that's where I went there. At that point, the game was, uh, you know, two to one us. And I just felt as though that uh, if he could get through the third, he could pitch the fourth based on where we were in the lineup. And, uh, you know, that was my thinking there. Hi, Yancey. I haven't had a chance to talk to you much at all. Um, uh, tonight, I asked Buddy just a moment ago, uh, I said I thought your you know, performance tonight was pretty impressive. And he said outside the, the leadoff walk, uh, he really liked the movement on your, um, your fastball and your breaking stuff. I'm curious, do you feel like you're kind of way, uh, working your way back to the pitcher you were last year? Yeah, I feel like I've had some positive strides in the second half compared to what I did in the first half. And little by little, I'm getting back to where I was at last year. Anything in particular, Yancey, that um, you've been focusing on or or working on to to try to, you know, bring down the, 
the traffic on the bases, et cetera? Just my direction, my mechanics, just make sure it's in the control. Okay, what, what's your, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, what's your mood been like this season? Because you pitched so well last year and I know Buddy was counting on you to be a late inning guy this year and it kind of hasn't worked out. Uh, what's your mood been like through the course of this year? Just trying to find myself and do what I did last year, like I said at the beginning, just try to take it day by day and not look too far ahead. Okay. Health-wise, everything good? You feeling good? Because I think you were throwing uh, mid-90 fastball today, which that looked good, but everything good health-wise? Yeah, everything feels great. Okay. Thanks, Yancey. I appreciate it. Thank you. We'll go to Kevin Henry next. Go ahead, Kev. Uh, Yancey, I just wanted to ask you about the uh, the double play that you got with CJ and, and kind of how that helped you in the inning. Uh, I think he just put me back into a good spot in my head mentally after the walk and just let me go and just you know I have two outs and just go take the next guy. And can you talk a little bit about the the mood in the bullpen whenever all of a sudden things have shifted and, and there's an, kind of the emergency need for for a longer game out of the bullpen? What does that do to you guys? I feel like we just have to be prepared no matter what. And I feel like we just have to go trust the next guy to get the job done. All right. Thanks, Yancy. No problem.